Hello friends, in this particular video, we are going to discuss about final drive. What exactly a final drive is, then we will proceed to see its classification and lastly its function. So let's begin with our topic which is final drive. First of all, we need to understand what is our final drive. See, whenever there is transmission in an automobile, we need to understand that initially the engine develops power and we need to transfer the same to the different links. So what happens is the power flows in a straight direction. But whenever we need to transfer the power to the rear wheels, here there is the change in the direction of power. So what happens is we need to adopt some particular mechanism which is called as a final drive. So what happens is here it helps us in changing the direction. So which is one of the major reasons why we adopt this final drive. So let's see and understand about some important points. See the first important point is at the drive axle the power is diverted at right angles and this is very important. When I say that right angles, you need to understand that we are trying to change the direction of power not in the straight direction but instead in a right angle. So here we need to understand that this is a very important function of our final drive. Also the change in direction of power flow is obtained by means of final drive. So see it is not always like we can easily adopt any technique and we can get our objective. So here what we need to understand is at the rear wheels as the power enters we have to change its direction. So what we do we adopt some different mechanisms which will help us in doing so. So here this power flow which is helping us in understanding this particular mechanism will lead us to the final drive. Also it provides the speed reduction. See this important point we need to take care. Because the speed reduction between the drive and the driven shaft, this is also one of the important features. See when I talk about the speed variation, you need to understand that gearbox is also one of the very important components. What used to happen? Inside the gearbox we had the different linkages and which were responsible in changing the speed as well as the torque ratio. So this is one of the important features which will help us in changing the speed. So this is all about the final drive. Let's see its classification. Okay, so over here we have a detailed classification of our final drive. See, initially the final drive can be classified into the gear type and chain type. So these are the two important classifications. The chain type. The first one is the chain type. So what happens is, see, you know that in a chain, you can take the example of our bicycle also. Whenever we need to change the power from one place to another, what happens? We adopt some type of mechanism, connecting mechanism. So for example, if we use the chain drive, whenever the front wheel is rotating, it will take the rear wheel along with it. So this is something which we get from the chain drive. But it is rarely used in case of our automobile transmission because we have the option of gear type. So what are the advantages that we get when we adopt with the gear type? See, first of all, you need to understand that whenever the gears are in mesh with each other, they easily tend to rotate each other in such a way that there is minimum noise generated. So this is one of the most important advantage. Then what we are getting is we are getting a higher gear ratio. So I mean to say that these are more efficient and these are more accurate as compared to the chain drive. And hence the gear drive is mostly used. Now if we further classify the gear type, we can classify into three types. The first one is the worm and worm type. Then we have the hypoid type. And the last one is the bevel gear. See when we talk about the further classification, you need to understand that all the three are part of the same, which is the gear drive. So what happens is, when we are talking about the first one, the worm and worm wheel. Here we have one wheel, which is circular in section. 
and we have one worm which is perpendicular to it. Whenever the circular disc rotates, so it will slide the horizontal part. Now the first one which is a worm and worm type, what used to happen is whenever we are having a very limited space, what happens is and if we need to reduce that reduction, so we adopt this worm and worm type. So this is something we need to be aware. Then we have the hypoid and the bevel one. See both are similar in terms of construction. But what happens is here the gates are not straight. They are at a particular angle. So what happens is this helps us in getting another objective which is the gates will slide on each other. So this is one of the important features because here it will be a very smooth drive. Again, we will get the reduction in noise and our objective will be fulfilled. Now, the bevel gear is further classified into straight bevel, the spiral bevel and the herringbone bevel. So, these are all the three types of the bevel gear. So, the detailed construction as well as working, we are going to discuss individually in the next lecture. So, here it is just the detailed classification of our refinal drive. So, this you need to remember that initially we have classified it into the two parts, which was the chain drive and the gear drive. So, later on we have seen that since the chain drive was not suitable, we adopted for the gear drive, which was again further classified and this is the complete detailed classification. Now let's see and proceed with the functions of the final drive. The first important function of our final drive, it transmits the drive through an angle of 90 degree. So again, you need to remember that the power flow was in the straight direction. When it appears on our final drive, here you need to remember that the two wheels which are situated at the rear axle, they need power. So for that we have to change the direction. So this is by means of final drive. The next important function over here is that it gauges down the engine revolution and to provide the direct top gearbox ratio. So what happens is, see this is very important. Engine always rotates in the straight direction. So it is not possible for us to reduce, sorry. <coughs> So it is not possible for us to again and again change the speed as well as the gear ratio. So this is also possible by means of adopting our final drive. And lastly, see in case of cars, a final drive ratio of approximately 4 is to 1 is also possible. So this is also one of the applications you can say of our final drive. Let's try to understand its actual construction. See here we have our cut section model. So in this particular cut section module, what we can see is there is a rear axle. Similarly, this is our bevel gear arrangement. Over here we have the crown wheel. And lastly there is a pinion. See whenever we see that the rear axle is rotating, whenever the rear axle is rotating, along with it the bevel gear the crown wheel as well as the pinion has to rotate. Now what happens whenever there is no smooth road, when we are riding on a bumpy road, so there the two different wheels need different types of power output, which is also possible by means of our final drive. So this is the entire you can say construction as well as the working. And lastly, you need to understand that final drive plays a very important function in the smooth functioning of our automobile transmission system. So here we have successfully understood what is exactly our final drive and we have seen its types as well as its construction. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and do subscribe to Ikeda.